For more than a week now, ever since news broke that Allison Redford's office was making up passengers for the former premier's flights to keep them empty, the opposition has been calling for Redford to resign her seat. And, of course, they've also asked that this report be sent to the RCMP for a possible criminal investigation. Well, now Redford has resigned, and Premier Dave Hancock has said he'll forward the AG's report to the police himself. So where does the opposition go from here, and how do they keep this issue alive heading into 2016? Joining me now is Carrie Toll, Wild Rose MLA for Innisfail Sylvan Lake from Edmonton. Carrie, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I want to get your sense uh, about Alison Redford's resignation and maybe what it does to uh, the political battles in Alberta that you've been having as opposition. Well, certainly she finally did the right thing today by resigning and uh, allowing her constituents to wipe the slate clean and have a representative that can actually um, you know, stand up for them. The reality of it is, though, for us, is that this is a culture within the party and within the government. 43 years this government has been in power, and the fact of the matter is, is that every single one of those cabinet ministers and the current premier all either looked the other way or allowed for these kind of actions to happen. And it just goes to show how out of touch this government and this party is with everyday Albertans. You know, one thing that the Wild Rose has been saying uh, ever since this began is that the rot runs deeper than just the Premier's office. And obviously that's an attempt to um, say, as you just did, that this is a, a party problem. And in some regards, I think you're right. I mean, the list of Alison Redford's scandals in particular uh, is a long one. It goes back really to 2012. There have been these flights to the London Summer Games and the flights, of course, to South Africa. Uh, so how, moving forward, are you going to be able to remind Albertans for the next two years uh, that this is the party of Alison Redford now that she's not even an MLA. Well, we don't see this as the party of Alison Redford. Alison Redford, uh, the, the reason she became such a problem is because the party and the government itself believes that this entitlement is just their, their option. And we're going to show Albertans that that's not the case. Minister Doug Horner is responsible for the air fleet. And we have been showing Albertans um, time and time again about how the air fleet has been uh, misused and misallocated. And it's a taxpayer resource. We saw Donna Kennedy Glantz um, resign after it was shown that she wrote on the very same air fleet to a PC party fundraiser using a taxpayer resource. We've seen, we've seen uh, the South Africa trips and we also saw the Olympic trips. In there, we also had the tourism minister at the time, Christine Cusinelli, who then also was forced to resign uh, or step down from a cabinet minister position when it was shown that she took her family on the on a trip and abused taxpayer dollars that way. So this isn't the first, it won't be the last, and, and uh, we'll continue to be there to show Albertans that they have more options, but more importantly, that this government feels so entitled that they've stopped respecting everyday Albertans. I, I want to get your sense, Carrie, on the second bombshell that came today. The first, of course, was that Redford was resigning. The second was that Premier Hancock said he's going to forward this to the RCMP. That's something that you, your party had been calling for. What do you think will come out of that? Do you actually think there could be uh, criminal charges as a result of this investigation? Well, it's hard to imagine that the Auditor General's report that's coming out tomorrow is worse than the leaked documents that were already given to us. But the reality of it is, is that if, if there was wrongdoing by Ms. Redford or anyone else, um, cabinet ministers, government bureaucrats, anyone else, and th that was criminal wrongdoing, they absolutely 100% should be investigated. And taxpayers have a right to make sure that we hold those people accountable. And we'll certainly encourage and, and, um, and, and support that decision. Now, if there's not, then, then certainly, obviously, we don't want the RCMP um, investigating if there's no reason to. But clearly, uh, you know, Minister or Premier Hancock is a lawyer. He sought legal advice and he's calling in the RCMP. So one has to wonder what's in that report. Also, the timing of Ms. Redford's uh, resignation today. Uh, there is a reason why she resigned the day before the report is about to be issued. Um, the only thing I would caution everyone is, is uh, to make sure that everyone understands no one person can do this much wrong by themselves. It's, it's absolutely impossible. Other people knew, other people were complacent, and other people supported this. And as you say, Carrie, it could well be a big day tomorrow again when that report yeah. comes out publicly. I want to get your sense very briefly here to end this. I want to get your sense. Politicians never put on their strategic hats, but I'm going to try to get you to put on yours. <laughs> and I want to get a sense from you how this helps Wild Rose in 2016. Is this the gift that keeps on giving, even though, of course, it is very negative and perhaps a sad day uh, for Alberta? This must be good for Wild Rose heading into 2016, right? Well, one of the things that it certainly has done is, is um, 
justified a lot of what we've been saying for the last two years and, and, and even longer than that. We have often been saying that this 43 reign of power has to end, that the corruption and the rot goes so, so, so deep, and that no one within the party can change it. Even Mr. Prentice coming in from the outside, he's one guy in a, in a, in a government MLAs of 60. Um, one person cannot change what's going wrong here. What, what it did show to Albertans is a that they didn't know what they didn't know before. And through freedom of information and through the media and through opposition, we've been able to show Albertans that there is a clear abuse of taxpayer resources here, a clear disrespect for Albertans, and it's, there's an opportunity for change and that they have a viable option. And we're prepared to do that and we're prepared to uh, represent Albertans in 2016. Okay, Kerry Toll, thanks very much for that. Kerry Toll.